How is it, Jason? Who is your ex? And this is black hole star, the star that shouldn't exist, but it's not because it's in a nutshell. Okay, yeah, this is the one. This is gonna be a head scratcher for me at least because black hole star can't exist, right? I mean, let's first of all, what is a star? A uh, collection of gas comes together because of gravity, basically, right? Uh, because of immense pressure and heat, it creates this nuclear fusion. And it basically is a ball of plasma, that star. Black hole is just like, uh, you know, when a massive star dies, it expands and then immediately collapse under immense pressure. And that collapsing is such a, under such a heavy pressure that it just keeps going. And it's, you know, it's a never ending loop right of constant collapsing so those two things are opposite a ball of plasma star supposed to generate energy and you know uh, basically you know spew out energy black hole supposed to suck everything in right so uh, th if the question is like can a uh, ca can there can there be a black hole inside of a star no it can't because black hole would eat the center of the star where the nuclear fusion is. Star won't be star anymore because nuclear fusion doesn't exist anymore. It's just, uh, it's just going to become this kind of a, a crescent disk around the black hole, whatever remain of the star is. And it would immediately collapse, not immediately, depending on the star, it will collapse pretty fast inside the black hole. Now, same thing would apply to the black hole star. If there is a black hole star, assuming the black hole is at the center of it, Nuclear fusion can't happen because black hole is sucking all the matter in, right? So same process would go by the way I said it. But if you imply the uh, black hole is so big and uh, it has uh, lots of uh, matter around it, a crescent disk, and it creates, you know, it heats up so much that somehow it fusion causes nuclear fusion around it. And all that, uh, you know, matter and gas around the black hole basically becomes, in a way, star-like and releases energy. I don't know. This is confusing for me. But yeah, this is going to be a really good video, especially for me, because I have no knowledge about this. And it's, you know, star-related. So it's going to be fun. Let's watch it. Black hole stars may have been the largest stars that ever existed. They burned brighter than galaxies and were larger than any star today or that could ever exist in the future. But besides their scale, what makes them special and weird is that deep inside, they were occupied by a cosmic parasite, an endlessly hungry black hole. How is that even possible? It's not, though. I bet it's just gonna end. First of all, there used to be massive hypergiant star at the early universe, right? And that's where the, you know, that's where we think the supermassive black holes come from because of these giant stars. If the implication is that there's somehow a black hole got inside these massive stars and start to eat it up. But since the star is so big, it takes time. So for that time being, it became a black, black hole star. But that would be just a star that black hole is inside of it and eating. Doesn't make it black hole star. Black hole star means it's a, some kind of a stable system where black hole is, is part of it and is making it a star. I mean, it doesn't make sense. Black hole stars take the weirdness of black holes and go beyond to break everything we know about how stars form and grow. They were only possible during a short window of time in the early universe, but if they existed, they would solve one of the largest mysteries of cosmology. Black hole stars were excessive any way you look at them. The most massive stars today may have about 300 solar masses. A black hole star had up to 10 million solar masses of nearly pure hydrogen. Let's take a moment to look at what this means visually. The Sun, Wesson, LL Pegasi, the largest star, and finally, the black hole star. Damn. Its scale is beyond words. Over 800,000 times wider than our Sun, 380 times larger than the largest star we know today. And far below its surface is a black hole, growing rapidly as it devours billions upon billions of tons of matter per second. Normally... See, this is where I'm like, how does that make sense? See, this is where the nuclear fusion happens. There is so much pressure and heat here that atoms basically fuse, right? So nuclear fusion. But that wouldn't work if there is a literal sucking force there called black hole, which sucks everything in, right? So that nuclear fusion wouldn't happen if there's a black hole there. 
So if the black hole somehow got here, this would not be stay like this for a long time, depending on the size of the star. It would be like instant. And then, like I said, every uh, matter around it would just be a, you know, a crescent disk around black hole, right? Surface is a black hole growing rapidly as it devours billions upon billions of tons of matter per second. Normally, stars are born from gigantic clouds, collections mm. of thousands or millions of solar masses of mostly hydrogen. In these clouds, matter starts to accumulate around the densest spots inside. As these spots get denser, their gravitational pull intensifies and they grow faster. Eventually, they generate so much heat and pressure that they ignite fusion reactions and a new star is born. But this puts a limit on their size. Nuclear fusion releases enough radiation energy that the surrounding gas cloud is blown away. The new baby star can't gather more mass. From now on, the star is living on the edge between two forces. Gravity pulling in, trying to squash the star, and radiation created by fusion pushing outwards, trying to blow the star apart. After millions or billions of years, the core runs out of fuel and the balance breaks, destroying the star. But black hole stars were very, very different. The beasts of the early universe. A few hundred million years after the Big Bang, when the universe was much smaller, all the matter in existence was much more concentrated. The universe was much denser and hotter. Yeah. Dark matter was a dominant player, forming giant structures called dark matter halos. These dark matter halos were so massive that they pulled in and concentrated unimaginably gigantic amounts of hydrogen gas, becoming the birthplaces of the first stars and galaxies. Okay. Epic clouds of hydrogen formed, some as massive as 100 million suns, more than the mass of small galaxies. In this unique environment that will never exist again, the enormous gravitational pull of the dark matter halos drew gas into its center and created extremely massive stars. As we said before, when a star is born, it blows away the gas cloud that created it. But these titanic gas clouds in the early universe were so large and massive that even after their birth, more and more gas piled on the newborn star, making it grow to unbelievable proportions. Okay. The young star is forced to grow and grow and grow, getting more and more massive, until in some cases, it reaches up to 10 million times the mass of our sun. Crushed by gravity, its core gets hotter and hotter, desperately pushing outwards, trying to blow itself apart, but to no avail. There's too much mass and too much pressure. The balance is impossible to uphold. Like a supernova on fast forward, the core gets crushed into a black hole. Normally, that would be the end. Yeah. Today, stars go supernova, a black hole forms, and things calm down. But in this case, the star survives its own death. A tremendous explosion rocks the star from the inside, but it's not enough. The star is so large and massive that not even a supernova can destroy it. But now, it has a black hole for a heart. It's tiny, a few tens of kilometers in the center of a thing the size of the solar system. The monster grows. Again, though, I get it that because star got bigger and bigger, right, it collapsed inside, the core became black hole. But now there, is, there can't be much of nuclear fusion there because there's a block, black hole that is sucking in, right? I mean, that's a point. Once it goes in the route of black hole, where it just collapses unendingly, that's where the nuclear fusion stops, right? Because it won't let nuclear fusion go, right? It will just suck everything in. That's what it does. So how does fusion work? How, how would it be still be a star after that? Stars are born from ever faster spinning and collapsing gas, and so they also spin. When a black hole is born from the core of a star, it keeps its angular momentum. This means that matter that gets drawn in doesn't just fall in a straight line, but instead begins orbiting the black hole, in smaller and smaller circles, going faster and faster. The result is an accretion disk where gas orbits at nearly the speed of light. Yeah, okay. Only a small amount of gas actually falls in at any given moment. Basically, black holes put a lot of food on the table and only nibble at it. But the matter trapped in the accretion disk doesn't have a good time. 
friction and up. collisions between particles heated up to temperatures of millions of degrees. Actively feeding black holes have accretion disks that are incredibly hot and powerful. This heat from the disk further restricts how much a black hole can develop. Yeah, that is why in lots of black holes uh, you see accretion disk and there's too much matter there. It heats up, heats up, but black hole can only take certain amount for a certain time, let's just say. So if the matter tries to get in more and more, it will just heat up and that's why it shorts up as those, you know, gamma rays that we see, right? On, from the poles of black hole, that's the, those matter, right? Because it can't get in, it just becomes hotter and hotter and shoots out like that. So there's a certain amount black hole can suck in. It's, it's not like if you cram a lot of things in, we're just going to suck all of it in. That's not how it's going to work. So this is like what I thought at the early, you know, beginning of things. Like if black hole becomes in, inside of a giant star, obviously it will stop nuclear fusion in a way, or maybe not. Maybe the accretion disk area, that will be so hot. And since it's a gigantic star, will keep the, because of the heat, will keep the fusion going. But star is, black hole is still sucking in the star slowly. Hour, just like the core of stars, the super hot material creates radiation that blows away most of the food within its reach. So even if a black hole had access to as much food as it desired, it can only grow slowly. A black hole embedded inside a black hole star is different. The enormous pressure surrounding it pushes down matter directly into the black hole, overcoming all restrictions on how fast it can consume. This process is so violent and releases so much energy that the accretion disk becomes hotter and releases more radiation pressure than any star core ever could. Enough to push back against the weight of 10 million suns. An impossibly dangerous balance has been created. Millions of soda masses pushing in, the angry radiation of a force-fed black hole pushing out. For the next few million years, the black hole star is consumed from within. Oh. The black hole grows to thousands of solar masses, and the bigger it gets, the faster it eats, which heats up the star even more and causes it to expand. In its final phase, the black hole star has become over 30 times wider than Stuck our solar hell. system, truly the largest star to ever exist in the universe. The intense magnetic fields at its core spew out jets of plasma from the black hole's poles which pierce through the star and shoot out into space, oh turning it into a cosmic beacon. It Imagine must have the scale been of that. the most awe-inducing sights to ever exist in the universe. But this I all mean, knowing that this is like a 30 times as big as our solar system's diameter, <laughs> and it suits out this little jet. Just imagine the scale. I think, I, I think as soon as you go beyond Stephenson, you just stop imagining. I don't think you can even imagine the Stephenson how big it is, right? But this thing is just like, okay, it's big. I don't, I don't know what else we want to say about it. <laughs> also marks the end. It becomes too stretched and the accretion disk within too powerful. The parasite destroys its host, blowing it apart. A black hole with the mass of 100,000 suns rips its way out to hunt for new prey while leaving behind nothing but a star carcass. The supermassive question. Yeah, this is where the supermassive If also. black hole stars existed, they could explain one of the greatest mysteries of the universe. The supermassive black holes we see at the center of galaxies are just too big. They shouldn't be possible. Black holes born from regular supernovas can be a few tens of solar masses at most. And because of the process we explained before, they grow slowly after that. If black holes merge, they can form slightly larger black holes of over a hundred solar masses. It should take billions and billions of years to make black holes with hundreds of thousands or even millions of solar masses. And yeah, supermassive black holes are so big that there's a gap of how big a black hole can be. There's a massive gap. So it's like, where did this shit come from? It should take a long time. So I knew about the giant star, right? Like in early universe, there were colossal big stars that collapsed and became black hole. Probably is what supermassive black hole is. But I guess this in a way makes sense too. A star is so big that uh, the pressure is so immense, the core became a black hole. You know, over time it just ate it apart. But that's just a, you know, I guess it's so big and it takes such a long time. That time is sufficient enough for you to say it's a black hole star, is that it? Otherwise, it's an eating process. It's not a stable state in a way, right? I don't know. <laughs> we know that some supermassive black holes already had 800 million solar masses 
only 690 million years after the Big Bang. Black hole stars are a sort of black hole cheat code. If they formed very early in our universe, and the black holes that emerged from them were thousands of solar masses, then they could be the seeds for supermassive black holes. These seeds could take root in the center of the earliest galaxies, merging with others and drawing in enough matter to grow quickly and reliably. Mm. Very soon, we may be able to verify their past existence. The James Webb Space Telescope yeah. is turning its sensors to explore the farthest reaches of the universe, looking back in time, back to the early universe that we couldn't the see for before. This. So, with luck, we might be able to witness glimpses of these tragic titans in the brief moment between their formation and destruction. Until then, yeah, this decade is going to be epic, especially for, because of James Webb, right? Because now the you know the waveform that you know the light it sees, light uh, light spectrum that it sees, it will be able to see even more farther away than the Hubble was, right? Hubble was like you know uh, visible light, right? So with the James Webb, we'll be able to see even farther away, more, much more information that we had with the Hubble. So next decade, all the information that will come is just going to be epic. Do the visual journey again, just for fun. Stars are big. Black hole stars, bigger. Colossal. <laughs> Sagittarius. Oh, that's our supermassive black hole. Messi 87 Torn and now <laughs> Oh my god that Planning is... a long-term project like the James Webb Space Telescope requires some serious budgeting But even personal finances are a nightmare to manage on your own that... Yeah people go to rocketmoney.com for us Khazgazad and support this channel Okay, again, uh, we sometimes uh, tag a certain process into a state because for us that's a long time, I don't know. But the star is so big and if the black hole forms in the center of it, it will slowly eat it away. But that slowly eating it away takes time and I guess that time is big enough for, it, for us to give it a label that it's a black hole star but in reality it's just eating the star from inside. Star got so big that, you know, it didn't just form nuclear fusion, but it formed a black hole in the center of it because of the pressure. So it just started to eat it away. So eventually nuclear fusion would kind of stop and whatever left around would create this kind of, a, you know, because it's so big, right, it's not going to create your conventional uh, accretion disk type of thing, but it basically would be that because, you know, matter is moving with a light speed around it. So basically just eating it from inside slowly before it explodes and there you go, your supermassive black hole. So it kind of makes sense. As soon as I saw a black hole star, holy shit, how is this possible with this way? Okay, you know, kind of makes sense. All right, well, if you like my example, like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.